after spending six years of taking care of Mom with all my might. At Mother-in-Law Victoria's funeral, my husband, speaking as the chief mourner, choked up with such words. What? Who does he think he's kidding? Pressing a handkerchief to my eyes, pretending to wipe away tears that wouldn't come, I watched my husband stand before the microphone with a look of disdain. I fumbled in my pocket to make sure of something I had hidden there. Is it about time? I wonder. The facade of the poor son who lost mom after years of caregiving was about to be peeled away. It was six years ago that my husband suddenly declared we'd live with Victoria. Mom's fallen ill. She'd be anxious, alone, so I'll take care of her at home. That's how the life of caring for Victoria began, with those words from my husband. Fortunately, we didn't have children and had enough room, so it was easy to welcome Victoria. Having lost my parents in a car accident early in life, I wanted to do my best for Victoria, but it seemed I was the only one who thought that way. I'll be late again today, so please take care of Mom. Uh, again? What are you doing out so late every day? Work, obviously. You've never done this before. And after all, you were the one who insisted on living with Victoria. Now you're dumping all the caregiving on me? What's your plan here? If we put her in a facility, it'll cost money, right? It's free if you do it. Is that why you brought her home? Shut up, will you? Women should be more comfortable together, right? My husband, unapologetically blunt, his involvement in Victoria's case was nil, and days when he wouldn't return home until it was already the next day increased. Two months into the cohabitation, I was exhausted from the unfamiliar caregiving. Meanwhile, my husband's skin appeared healthier. Approaching 50, he started using cologne he never wore before, setting his hair while humming tunes each morning, practically announcing an affair. You know, can't you tidy up a bit more? Aren't you embarrassed going around in those dirty, rag-like clothes without even putting on makeup? How can I find time for makeup when I'm caregiving from morning till night? I have to choose clothes that are easy to move in. Whose fault do you think this is? Don't yell. It's only natural for a wife to take care of her husband's mom. That's ridiculous. Besides, Victoria never listens to me. She's always demanding, just like her son. Unbelievable. Proud Victoria couldn't stand being cared for by someone else, resulting in frequent arguments. She never once thanked me. But venting my frustration on my husband only irritated him further. He began complaining about the meals I prepared, eventually not eating them at all. Despite such terrible treatment, I had nowhere else to go, being without relatives. My husband must have been aware of my predicament. You have no choice but to stay in this house. I seemed to hear such words. Five years passed, and I remained the sole caregiver for Victoria. Then, when Victoria fell ill and was diagnosed with a serious condition, it was clear her condition was advanced, with only six months to live. Faced with the decision of hospitalization or home care, my husband said, It's already too late for anything, right? Hospitalization is just a waste of money. Home care is the only option. Wait, don't just decide that. Are you going to take care of her? Ha, huh. you've been caring for her all this time, so take responsibility until the end. Why don't you do something sunlike for once? Oh, I'll pray to God to ease her suffering quickly. How's that? A dutiful son, right? I was speechless at my husband's smug look. This means my hard, caregiving life will soon be over. Suddenly, I found myself thinking that. Reflecting on the six years of diligent care, my feelings were complex. Unaware of my turmoil, my husband hurried off to his affair. He began to change about three months after Victoria received her terminal diagnosis. Sometimes he would visit Victoria's room and spend several minutes there. Maybe even someone like him becomes kinder as his mom's end nears. Not wanting to intrude on their parent-child time, I deliberately avoided going near when my husband was in Victoria's room. Having lost my parents suddenly in an accident, 
I had no chance to say goodbye, so I envied, albeit inappropriately, the limited time my husband and Victoria had together. That day, like always, I brought food to Victoria, and as I was about to leave the room, unexpectedly, Can I talk to you for a moment? She called out to me. When I returned to the living room 30 minutes later, I must have looked quite odd. Hey, what's wrong? Did you eat something strange? Uh, no, nothing. Even my usually indifferent husband spoke to me. Lacking confidence to stay calm, I said, I'm going out for some shopping, and hurriedly left the house. Walking down the street, I couldn't help but remember the conversation in Victoria's room and struggled to hold back tears. Victoria passed away four months later. A year had gone by since her terminal diagnosis. Even knowing the end was near, witnessing someone's final moments is mentally taxing. I kept myself together by busying with funeral arrangements and contacting relatives. Yet my husband only said, Make the funeral the cheapest one, and didn't lift a finger to help. To make matters worse, Where's my mourning suit? He started asking. You're the chief mourner. Get it together. Huh? Just leave the funeral proceedings to the professionals. All I have to do is give a speech. That's true. But what's with your attitude? Your mom just died. Can't you show a little sadness? I raised my voice in frustration, and he just snorted. Nah, I'm only feeling joy. Excuse me? I mean, it's about time. She was given six months, but she just kept living, you know? <laughs> I was speechless at his outrageous words. Realizing it was futile to argue, I was about to leave when he suddenly exclaimed, Oh, right. I exaggerated. Yes, this. All that's left is your signature. And slammed divorce papers he had pulled from a drawer onto the table. Man, I'm finally able to submit this. The nuisance mom is gone, and you, the caregiver, are no longer needed. So you want a divorce? Obviously. There's a younger, prettier woman waiting for me. Let's end all this hassle at once. It seemed both Victoria's funeral and our marriage were just inconveniences to him. My silence must have seemed like an agreement, and his excitement only grew. Ah, and you might know, but mom, despite appearances, had saved quite a bit of money. Is that so? Yeah, and as her only son, I'll inherit everything. There's nothing for you. <laughs> you and mom didn't get along, right? Wouldn't want to trouble her spirit by giving her wealth to someone she disliked. Can we talk about the divorce after Victoria's funeral at least? That was all I could muster in response to his smug monologue. After that, I did give you the divorce papers, remember? He said and left the room. Victoria's funeral proceeded solemnly, witnessed by relatives, leading up to the final eulogy. My husband stood before the microphone with a solemn expression, gazed at Victoria's portrait for a while, then deeply bowed to the attendees. Thank you all for joining us today at my mom's funeral. He began his speech with a trembling voice, bringing a handkerchief to his eyes eliciting soft sobs from the attendees. After a lengthy silence, he resumed speaking. Since everyone knew Victoria had been bedridden, he mentioned her battle with illness in his speech. And then, he said something unbelievable as his closing remarks. For six years since Mom's illness was diagnosed, I've been taking care of her. But unfortunately, he choked up again, pretending to hold back tears and looked down. What? Which mouth of his is saying this? The relatives, unaware that my husband had dumped all the caregiving on me? The atmosphere in the hall grew even more sorrowful. Is it about time? I wonder. I reached into my pocket and slowly took out something I had hidden. The tragic hero. The poor son who lost mom after years of caregiving could only play his part until now. It was time to signal my counterattack. Ladies and gentlemen attending, may I share a message from the deceased Victoria? I suddenly stood up from my seat and shouted, 
causing both my husband and the relatives to look at me in surprise. But undeterred, I held up the voice recorder I had taken from my pocket and pressed the play button. As Victoria's recorded voice filled the silent hall, the atmosphere completely changed. Thank you, everyone, for coming today. Is my son properly giving his eulogy as the chief mourner? He's probably lying about having taken care of mom all by himself. Victoria's words made the relatives exchange glances and frown at my husband. What are you doing? Stop it right now. This is a funeral. Oh, but there's more to hear. This was requested by Victoria, today's main character. Huh? She wanted this recording to be played during the chief mourner's speech. Now just listen quietly, please. Ignoring any objections, I pressed the play button again, and what followed was the truth about what had happened in our home. The fact that I had been the one caring for Victoria. My husband hadn't helped at all. Instead, he had been harsh to me and frequently visited his mistress. My husband's face stiffened for a while, but then he suddenly burst out laughing and began to wear a sarcastic smile. Then, with an exaggerated gesture, he spread his arms wide and addressed the relatives. Everyone, you're not actually believing the words of an old woman, are you? Actually, in the past two months, Mom started saying all sorts of nonsensical things. How dare you say such things? Well, well, you two, taking the ramblings of a senile old woman seriously and spouting such nonsense in front of relatives. How can you speak so of your own mother? Oh, I see. You're trying to win over the relatives here to snatch the inheritance I'm supposed to get from Mom. What? Too bad for you. I already told you yesterday. You won't get a penny of Mom's inheritance. I couldn't bear his ranting any longer. It was time to play my trump card. Unfortunately for you, you won't receive a single penny of Victoria's inheritance. What do you mean? Victoria disinherited you. Understand? You have no right to her inheritance. It's written in the will I gave to the lawyer, and it's also recognized by the court. That's a lie, right? Then who gets the inheritance? According to Victoria's will, I'm the sole inheritor. You? That's despicable. How did you? Did you threaten Mom to make her do this, you heartless woman? Who's the heartless one here? I shouted, tears brimming in my eyes, causing even my husband to flinch momentarily. He couldn't possibly understand why I was crying. I stared at him and pulled out a cell phone from my bag. This is the cell phone Victoria used. If you listen to the recording data here, you'll understand why the court approved your disinheritance. Hey, what is that? I turned up the phone's volume to the maximum and played it so the relatives could hear. Just drop dead already. Stop clinging on like this in regret. Hey, hey, your six months are long overdue, right? If your time hasn't come yet, why don't you go yourself? The recording played hideous words, unbearable to the ear. Not just that, but it also captured sounds of my husband hitting Victoria and throwing things at her. For a few months, I was somewhat happy to see you going to Victoria's room. I thought, he's a son after all. He wants to spend the little time left with Victoria. That's what I believed. That's because. But it was different, wasn't it? Despite Victoria trying to live strongly with the six months she was given, you did this. Wait a minute, why are you crying? Weren't you and Mom on bad terms? It's not surprising my husband misunderstood. Indeed, Victoria and I argued daily. However, this was only during the first year of cohabitation. As we continued our quarrels, Victoria gradually opened up to me, who silently cared for her. By the third year... I even confided in Victoria about my husband's affair, but we continued to pretend to be on bad terms in front of him on Victoria's advice. Victoria, upset by his infidelity and the fact that he left the caregiving to me alone, adamantly stated she didn't want him to inherit anything. You thought Victoria and I were on bad terms, so you threw such terrible words at her without hesitation, thinking they wouldn't reach me. 
You are just dancing to Victoria's tune. You sneaky... But why? You knew she had limited time left? Why did you have to push Victoria like that? That was my first question after hearing the mobile recording from Victoria. If he hadn't done that, he might not have been disinherited. But that question was answered by my husband's unbelievable confession. Actually, when they said she only had six months, I thought I'd inherit a lot from Mom and went on a spree with her. I even borrowed money. Her? The woman you had an affair with? Yep, well... Disgusting. But Mom lived past the six months, and the deadline for repaying the loan was approaching. I was panicking, too. I was utterly disgusted by how rotten he was. As I looked at him coldly, he suddenly changed his attitude and began pleading with me. Hey, you haven't filed that divorce application yet, right? Let's not break up. What are you saying now? It's decided we'll divorce. Victoria's will even says I should divorce you after the funeral. That's, please rethink it. Without the inheritance, I have no way to repay the loan. Help me. As I struggled to shake off my husband, who clung to my feet with a pitiful face unlike anything I'd seen before, enough is enough, one of the relatives shouted. Following that, everyone at the venue started condemning my husband. No one was on his side anymore. He was carried out by two or three relatives. A month after Victoria's funeral, I finished all the inheritance procedures and divorced my husband. I filed for a 20K security deposit for the divorce lawsuit against both my husband and his mistress. Apparently, the woman was a colleague from his company, and after their relationship was exposed, they both resigned due to discomfort. Moreover, due to the uproar, my husband was disowned by the relatives and lost all support. Now he lives with his abandoned mistress, working from morning till night to pay the divorce lawsuit security deposit and the debts from their extravagant lifestyle. As for me, I used part of the inherited wealth to build a grand tombstone for Victoria. On the monthly death anniversary, I bring Victoria's favorite flowers and reporting my daily life has become my pleasure. Victoria, I too, eventually want to join you in this tomb. That's okay, right? Imagining Victoria with a troubled smile on her face, I couldn't help but smile myself. <laughs>